Yeah, I guess it's a nice little countdown here. But yeah, I love that. I, I'm extremely excited today because we're joined by Dr. Anna Davis. Recently, Dr. Anna Davis, congratulations to that. Thank you so um, much. Super, such an exciting time. Um, how how are things? How, how does how does it feel to be done with the dissertation? Um, like what? Like is it such a relief? How is putting the thesis together? Um, I'm dreading that. Yeah, like, no, it's um, it wasn't fun. I I think that um, I'll answer your questions in chronological order because yeah, putting <laughs> the thesis together was um. I, I got a pretty early start formatting it, and I was like, oh, well, the, the formatting, that's going to be the hard part. That's going to be like, oh, I'm going to get everything together. I'm going to get the table of contents, auto-populating. No, no, I think writing is actually the hard part. Mm, um, okay. So that was, I did that basically in one, I don't know, one month fever dream um, at, <laughs> a, uh, at a dive bar that I like. Uh, yes. Over a, a nice, a nice uh, hazy IPA. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it was, it was, uh I don't know. I procrastinated a lot, which I think uh, many people in in literally any type of academic setting are uh, are asked to do. So right, it's kind of miserable at the end um, because I had a lot to put together. But um, it definitely it, forcing myself to just sit down and write actually did in the in the final hours end up working. So right, you just got to plow through it. Any like any like, I mean, maybe not you necessarily, but like for other people that are looking to write soon, like. Um, any advice for them for writing a thesis? Like what, what kind of works for you and maybe? Um, I think that, so I think that um, one of the best things for me was to find a place to do it. That is that you enjoy being mm. like, I, I, I was a little self-conscious at first when we started recording. Cause I'm like very obviously in my bedroom right now, but like the lab sure. is really loud we're doing, they're replacing fume hoods. So there's bound to be construction and like jackhammers going off in the background. So that wouldn't have really been <laughs> conducive to a good interview, but um I think that, yeah, like, I mean, I, I obviously, I, I did a lot of time at uh, this bar that I like, but I also went to coffee shops. I went to the library. I went to, I kind of explored Charlottesville a little bit um, more than I have since mm -hmm. I actually got here. Um, just trying to find fun, casual settings to work. And I think that getting to, I don't know, have a beer or have some good coffee or something as I'm going, kind of like pairing the, pairing the work with something fun, like a little treat, it definitely right. made it a lot more, uh, a lot more bearable. You definitely have to like put your, you have to like there's like these little things that i guess when i'm preparing to write or whatever like there's like little things you got to do to like put yourself in that writing mode and i definitely like hear that you know whether that's getting a coffee sorry i think i think the review no, chapter was the hardest part um because i don't know well i did my i did my review chapter on total synthesis so mm. i had to make basically the really large total synthetic schemes for every single paper Ooh. that i reviewed so that I, I kind of did that to myself, but um, I ended up that I think actually took probably over half of the uh, thesis writing time just because making the figures and distilling these total syntheses down into, uh, I don't know, something that can fit in a little subsection of a chapter um, was probably right. the most expensive part. The other parts I, was honestly pretty, it flowed pretty well because I had the figures, I had the poster like I, from poster presentations and other and group meeting talks i had the figures already made so if i just kind of pasted those in order that actually kind of helped inform how i was going to write and i just kind of had to fill in yeah uh, yeah on that because i saw i saw on social media that you're uh tweeting about uh like writing a review on total synthesis so like what is that like a like a like a accounts of chemical research type or how do you what do you what are you up to it was honestly so it was so i'm actually we just do um i'm not really sure how um how university of houston does the format the dissertation format but um, okay for uh our first chapter we have to do like a review basically um oh okay okay yeah i didn't know yeah. that okay i'm actually i'm working also on another review on uh selective organic catalytic ch functionalization with my boss right now and that okay. is um that's gonna be published pretty soon um but looking forward to that still a little bit that's a little bit in the works uh we're finishing that up but um sure yeah so i would love to uh i would love to honestly take uh the work that i did through peer review i think that would be really cool um mm. the work was on the use of um this which is incredibly specific i can't believe i was able to write like a 50 page review on this um but it was the use of four plus two cyclo additions to make n heterocycles in total synthesis okay so yeah that... I, I was not relegating myself to four plus twos at first, but I found 110 references for all types of cyclo additions. And I'm like, well, I don't have time for that. So, right. Well, that's a, that's a good transition then, because 
we'll talk about a little bit about your research then. So, you know, for, for people that, well, well, actually, yeah, people that don't know you are, um, well, recently graduated from UVA, University of Virginia. I always forget what the A stands for, but. It's, I mean, it's, VA is like the state abbreviation, I guess. Oh, that's right. Oh, my God. Okay. A is, <laughs> the, last letter. A is, v is the first letter in Virginia and A is the <laughs> last letter. <laughs> okay. Uh, but you're also in the Helensky group um, and you do heterocyclic chemistry. So yeah. I know you do. You recently published on, you know, vinyl aridines for dining files and mm-hmm. some deals auto reactions. So uh, perhaps, you know, we can get to know about your chemistry a little bit. So why don't we hop into that a little bit? Absolutely. So. I'll let you kind of take the floor here a little bit about your chemistry. Sure. So yeah, I'm trying to distill this down because I've given this talk so many times in the past few months. But oh, um, I should be good at it then. Yes, exactly, exactly. So <laughs> if I suck, then that's on me. But um, yeah, so I my my PhD research has kind of mainly focused on two major projects. Um, the second one is uh, currently uh, in publication. We're getting the manuscript ready right now, so I can't speak super deeply into that one just until that uh, that hits the presses, which will be very very soon. I will keep. I'll keep the Twitter internet sphere updated <laughs> with the progress on that. But um, the first project was, yeah, it was using um, two and four vinyl pyridines as dienophiles in Steel's auto reaction. So we basically kind of were operating on the same principles as um, alpha beta unsaturated carbonyls, uh, activating mm-hmm. those toward the Steel's auto reaction as dienophiles. These are uh, generally relatively electron deficient. They will undergo the cycloaddition under thermal conditions, but the selectivity and the yields are greatly, greatly improved by um, using a Lewis acid catalyst. Okay. So, um, and also the McMillan group and their organic catalytic work on um, on Diels alter reactions used uh, alpha beta unsaturated aminiums, which were generated in situ. And that was also a driving force in our work because if we coordinated the Lewis acid to the pyridine nitrogen lone pair, um, mm-hmm. and that was in conjugation with, um, with an olefin, that would also form an alpha beta unsaturated aminium. So kind of our, our proof of thought, our proof of concept was these kind of two main spheres of research that had already yielded positive results. And from there, um, we did some, just some tests with reactive, uh, with more reactive dienes, such as uh, cyclopentadiene, and mm-hmm. started kind of optimizing from there with less reactive dienes. Um, Basically, what we ended up getting to do was that we got down to unactivated dienes that were carbon-based, um, mainly just aliphatic, some uh, like aromatic substituents on them, not okay. anything to work, and I, I believe pretty low yield, but we got it to work. Um, and just using boron trifluoride diethyl ether eight as a Lewis acid, I wouldn't say catalyst, more of a promoter. Um, we had fifty percent loading, so we got a turnover, but um, anything. Anything less than that definitely lost efficacy. So, um, but it was uh, right. it was a really cool project and it was a brand new research. Do you have a good sense? Our... Just sorry, go ahead. Just on that though. So, like, do you no? Yeah, just on that. So, do you under like, hmm, like do you, do you understand? Like, why do you need like a high like loading? I guess like is that kind of well understood? Or um, I mean, I mean, so, sometimes it just is what it is. But I mean the. So, I mean, our, we have we have several hypotheses. Um, so, any catalyst that would um, bind loosely enough to the nitrogen lone pair to undergo more catalytic turnover was not sufficient to activate mm-hmm. the olefin toward um, toward the Diels Alder reaction at a temperature that was reasonable in comparison to the thermal right. variant. Um, it's a, we had to heat to about I think it was 180 degrees Celsius to get the thermal to go and I think that at okay. lower loadings of the BF3, we ended up getting well over 100 degrees Celsius um, above the reflux of acetyl nitrile, which was our optimized solvent. And it just kind of became like it, it worked, but it was not as effective as we needed it to be, especially with uh, Lewis acid is cheap and readily available as uh, boron trifluoride. So right. it just, it, that was more in terms of efficacy. Um, okay. And, and on the other end of that, we actually, we tried more, uh, more Lewis acidic Lewis acids um, with like, for instance, the, I don't know, the tris trifluoromethyl uh, boron aerolated um, Lewis acid. And that actually didn't work as well either because right. um, a lot of the, um, the comp, the adduct complex stayed associated even after the quench ended up in the, uh, in the aqueous layer, no matter how many 
extractions, how many quenches we did every single time I TLC the aqueous layer, it was still in there. So. What the heck? Okay. Yeah, I know. That's crazy. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So hmm. it was uh, generally right, kind well... of a walking the line between what is catalytically cool and what is actually effective. And we wanted essentially in the end, the reaction that was synthetically useful. Right. Yeah. It's, it's kind of going for it. Cause honestly, a lot of med chem, they end up just tossing in as much catalyst as uh, for the other, for it to work. Right. So it doesn't even really matter. <laughs> right. Um, so quote, uh, quote the wise philosopher Noah Bartfield, I think to total synthetic chemists are world leaders in using uh, stoichiometric equivalents of <laughs> catalyst in their reactions. <laughs> uh, it's so true, but you got to get it to work, you know? Oh exactly, my God. It's exactly. so true. Um, this is the first time I'm kind of doing this out of order, but you know what? Exactly. We're vibing, hanging out. Um, so I know you did your undergrad at, at University of Kentucky. Um, uh, Louisville, actually. Louisville, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're um, fine. You're fine. I, 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 will, I, will take, I will take as little offense to that as I possibly can. <laughs> That's good. No, no, go easy on me. Go easy program. on me. Uh, there, so. University of Louisville. Um, so are you from the area then? Are you from Louisville? Or that uh, area? or? So not originally. Um, so basically, I uh, I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, oh, let's go. Philadelphia. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Okay. Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania people. Wonderful. Let's go. Uh, but yeah, my, um, I, this is a, this is a kind of a funny part of, of the story, but um, I'm a, I'm a big horse girl. Um, I hope that makes everyone think less of me. Um, it's <laughs> an extremely embarrassing fact about me, but. Um, Why? Why? I don't know because the it's mainstream cringe. I want to be cool and hip, you know. <laughs> I guess I guess there is a lot of memes on the horse girls on on like social media. I guess right, I right. guess I, I kind of get that. I was that. not like the kind of horse girl that pretended to be a horse. Um, I was <laughs> I was a theater kid, so I was pretending to be other stuff. Right. But, um, yeah, I um, I've always really loved riding. Um, my mom was super into it and got me into it as a little kid. I um begged to take riding lessons when I was a little girl, and I think that she was like, "Yeah, this is her six year old pony phase." sure well i'll get her horse riding lessons and here i am 11 years later oh, sorry right. 21 years later i'm not i'm not 17 <laughs> i'm also not a mathematician but um i'm an organic chemist i kind yeah, of right. that because the math is too much, but, um here i am most of a most of a lifetime later and i am still in my six-year-old pony phase yeah Listen, um, listen, Pittsburgh is very conducive. The suburbs of Pittsburgh are very conducive for the horse life and the farm life. Yeah, I get yeah, it. No, Pittsburgh we, is great. We lived on the east side of Pittsburgh, and if you kept going kind of toward the Greensburg end, there were a lot of opportunities right. to ride. So I was, uh, I took lessons at a wonderful barn there, um, had an amazing, amazing trainer, got to ride some excellent horses. But I wanted to keep doing that in college. So, um, and I wanted to go further into the type of riding that I do, which is called eventing, um, which okay. is basically like a horse, it's a horse triathlon. Um, so the horse hmm. rides the bike and the horse swims. Um, no. There's uh, no, it's you. You basically do. It's um, wait, it's just, I, it literally swims. So you just it just messes no, with me. Like, you do okay. The dancing part, and then there's two okay. Different so um, it's a nice kind of like an all around riding, which uh, as somebody who's incredibly indecisive, uh, really appealed to me. But um, <laughs> there's not a lot of opportunities to to do that specific discipline in uh, Southwest Pennsylvania. So right. Um, Actually, more in your area, there absolutely was, but yeah, um, I yeah, there applied is. to colleges that um, that had just a, a bigger contention of that area, and I love Louisville. They gave me um, a really good scholarship, and um, yeah, I just love the area. So, I how far is it? How far is Louisville from Pittsburgh? Is it is it definitely yeah, drivable, or like I don't know if you flew seven hours drive. Okay, okay. And my mom no, actually, my mom lives there now, so um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it, it ended up being uh, it ended up working out really well because my mom works in the horse business, so right. Um, she ended up moving down there, um, yeah. kind of after me, but also kind of just to for more for a business move, and she's still there now. So. Right? Are you into Kentucky bourbon at all? Because, um, okay, yes. like oh, it, I that, love. I love bourbon. Both bourbon's probably my favorite. Ooh, I don't know where that's brewed though. I don't know where. I don't know I where. It. Okay, is there? They're around, so they're all kind of around the like Louisville, Lexington area. Um, right. I'm forgetting where specifically, but that's. I mean, I think there you can make bourbon in other states, but um, I think Kentucky is like by far the staple right? producer of it. Um, I wonder why that is. Like, I wonder what why Kentucky. Like, I don't know. Like, there's got to be some historical reason. 
Actually, I think it's a climate reason. Um, I went on a really? tour with my mom uh, for her birthday, I think, because it was uh, but Mother's Day or her birthday. Yeah. Uh, but we ended up, we went to the Woodford Reserve Distillery and part, and we went on like this really intensive tour. And um, part of it was, yeah, that they're, it's aging in the bourbon barrels. And there's something with like the heat and the humidity in the Kentucky summers that it's I like don't a know. like a perfect mixture, I guess. The, makes the woodiness of the oak come out or, uh, or something. I, right. If there's anyone, any like bourbon expert listening to this and hearing me absolutely butcher it, I'm so sorry. Um, listen, but, put it in the comments. If you're, if you're, if you're, listen, listen to the comments, like why? Why Kentucky yeah. and bourbon? Like, what makes it so good? I'm um, 99% sure it's like a, it's a climate thing. It's a weather thing. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that sounds right. It's got to be. I, the whole process of like, like even just, I mean, even like other spirits as well, but there's something about like a good bourbon and like seeing it. I've never really done any of those kind of tours, like nothing, like no wine tours, beer or yeah, spirits. Yeah, yeah. Well, I really got to do one. If you're ever up like, in the Kentucky area, I'll be there uh, like late summer into mid fall. Um, yeah. Just living, being a 27 year old living on my mommy's couch. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, listen, the housing market's crazy right now. There's no, there's no, there's no, 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 there's no, yeah, like it's no, it's no, uh, you know, I live, you know, it's funny. I was, I was actually talking to my parents and, uh, cause, you know, I'm down here in Houston, but my family's in Pennsylvania. Right, right. That's and I was like, you know, like, honestly, it's great. It's great to be out on your own but like when you're out on your own for a while it's like you kind of just miss being home or like with your your family you know so absolutely especially if you're close with them and, yeah exactly yeah. hear that so all right so you're at louisville um give you a good scholarship now did you kind of go in with an interest in chemistry or kind of how how did this all kind of begin for you so this is actually i'm so glad you asked me this because this is such a funny story um <laughs> so I was always really into like math and science as a kid. That was, I mean, I, I really liked school. I loved learning. Um, I generally, I was, I was always a nerd, um, but Fair. I definitely kind of tended more toward the science math, uh, kind of more uh, quantitative side of things. Yeah. But I think that when you, I don't really have, we're not really a science family. I think that there's, um, we have a very diverse group of uh, professions in our family, but a, a lot of people have kind of ended up on, either humanities or social sciences or just like marketing business that sort of thing so there's just not a lot of like strictly science people um to to speak of in our family so i didn't really know what career options there were right i think that you see a kid um as a non-science person who's good at science and you're like oh you should go to med school right yeah so so everyone told me oh you should go to med school you should go to med school and like from a middle school point and I mean, I remember I was in like, I, I pointed this out a lot in my in my dissertation, um, my eighth and ninth grade science teachers really kind of imbued me with this really this this passion for science, specifically the physical sciences. So uh, chemistry. That's super biology. sweet. That's and, super sweet. Yeah. So I went, um, I, I definitely, I, I wasn't really sure about being a doctor, but I wanted to be a scientist of some sort because of uh, Mr. Rikini and Mrs. Shank. Shout out. Shout out. Let's go. Put them in the comments. Let's go. Uh, yeah, eighth and ninth grade science teachers <laughs> made made a huge, huge, huge difference to me and the trajectory of my life. But I think that everybody was still kind of encouraging me to go more into being a doctor because they make more money than scientists, than academics. I mean, uh, maybe after three hundred thousand dollars of, uh, of you know student loans, right? right. I, I guess so. <laughs> eventually, eventually, but also I've got friends who are in the middle of residencies right now, and I don't envy them at all. <laughs> right, real. Um, it's actually hard work. <laughs> It, no, oh my gosh, crazy. Uh, Who thought? My, um, what got me into organic chemistry specifically was um, when I was in middle school, high school, kind of around the time where I wanted to be a scientist and everyone's like, be a doctor. And I was like, all right, fine. Um, my, my dad mentioned to me that, um, and also no experience in like the medical sciences or anything. He's a business uh, marketing, kind of, hospitality kind of guy. But he right. said that I heard about med school is that the hardest part about getting into med school is none of the med school parts not the applications the interviews whatever it's passing organic chemistry mm. and i've heard this too but go and, ahead uh, i he told me to, he told me this when i was like yeah 14 15 ish and when i was in 10th grade chemistry um pitt was offering this like short course organic chemistry intro to like seniors who wanted to study chemistry in college and our teacher advertised it to us and like mind you i'm, I'm in 10th grade 
and yeah. I am not going to college anytime soon, but I was like, well, this is what my dad said is really hard. So I like slap a flyer down and I'm like, I'm doing this. <laughs> so I, I, got, I got into it out of spite. Yeah. I wanted to, uh, like, I say, oh, I wanted to, I wanted to prove my dad wrong. I had a great relationship with my dad. Like my dad yeah. and I were very close, but I was just like, yeah. well, hey, screw you. I, I'm going to do the hard thing. Yeah. Um, and I, I take this class at Pitt um, when I'm, when I'm 15 and I fall in love with it when I'm there. Um, right. I kind of, what, what got me in the door was the, oh, I'm going to dunk on my dad. <laughs> um, but That's I how it actually, started. Oh, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. This is nothing like any science I've ever done. It's so much more artistic. It's so much more uh, to do with spatial awareness, which um, I've also really been into art for a while. So mm. that was definitely um, a huge draw for me. It was just the visualizing molecules in space was very intuitive to me. Yep. And that was, I just, the in the lab aspect where we got to be super hands-on and do, we, we got to do a Diels auto reaction. And I was like, well, the electrons go in a circle. That's crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> You knew what an electron was in tenth grade, though. I definitely, I, I don't even know what that meant, though. Honestly, like, <laughs> uh, I, I think it was, it was, I mean, a much, a much looser concept than I have. Yeah, now, yeah. But, um, I was just messing around, but that's really cool. You, it's really cool you did that. It's like, yeah, you like, of course, great relationship with your dad. You kind of did that spite, kind of like tongue in cheek. Yeah. But now it's like actually full circle. That's actually pretty funny. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's pretty I, cool. It worked out that way. Yeah, so I, I started, I went into, I actually went into uh, college as a bio major because um, the- Because why not? I, no, actually, so um, the, I, I had given up on the med school thing. I was like, I, I definitely wanted to be a scientist. I wanted to do research in some way. But um, Mrs. Shank, my ninth grade biology teacher, the whole first part of her uh, biology class was basically organic chemistry. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and which is really cool because like we was a very biochemically- uh, centered class that we learned about the reactions of biomolecules, peptides, it's like um, just mo biological monomers, et cetera. And yeah. how like the, um, how, how they're condensed together. We did a lot of, we did a lot of looking at the biological processes from a very organic chemical point of view. Mm -hmm. And I walked away from this being like, okay, that's what biology is. Uh, okay. That's not what biology is. No, it's not. Um, I got I got a, a few weeks into my bio class and they're like memorize every animal ever and I'm just like what the heck yeah right this is uh so yeah uh, th then couple... I switched to chemistry and the rest is history yeah. right let's go yeah yeah a couple of things I was actually I I just I was just talking to Sharon Newfeld for the podcast will be coming out yeah. I think next week and she's a she's a, a professor at Montana State but she was telling me that. Like during her AP Chem, like I guess it was a junior or a senior year of high school, mm -hmm. that her AP Chem teacher had said, because you know you have the AP Chem course, and he he specifically cut out the organic part because he thought it was too difficult. So I don't know. Like, uh, listen, I, I don't know. I don't know why there's this misconception that organic is really hard. I my presumption is that you know you have in undergrad you have a lot of like you know pre med students. You have a lot of Pre PT yes. and type of students in this courses in general, yeah. But it's like the very first time, like, and and generally, like, you have more academic students in these classes, right? They're not like idiots, right? Generally, right. so they're already kind of go getters. But organic is like the very first time that you have to actually like kind of think outside the box in a STEM sense. Like, obviously, like if you take humanities, you're always thinking um, abstractly. But I think, I mean, honestly, I mean. I think organic is the first time in a STEM field where you really have to, you can't just like, you can't just memorize things. You have to actually think about these. I don't know. I don't know if you agree with that. Cause I feel like I, I can't, I can't really think of anything like, Hmm. No, I, I really, I really strongly agree with that. Um, I've actually, I've done a lot of thinking about this because I, I, I want to go into academia. I want to be a professor. I, I want to lead my own research. I want to do uh, this do my work at a more research intensive university, but I do really like teaching. Um, yeah. And the, my TA assignments in grad school, I've really, really focused on trying to share the love of that I have for the subjects with people that wouldn't otherwise love it. Um, right. That's a big, a big deal for me. And what I, what I've found to be like kind of through that lens, the hardest part of organic chemistry for um, bio students is not necessarily that like it's, 
harder it's just it's so different so i i totally totally agree with what you're thinking it's it's more outside the box it's more abstract but i think that also most of the people that are pre-health are going into this they are most pre-health fields in general predicate on being able to memorize this huge wealth of information and keep that in your mind and that's right. how you derive understanding that's how you synthesize so you know the all the rules you know all the exceptions you know you have this very detail-oriented uh picture of your field and that is how you understand and apply it right and i think that organic chemistry is a lot more like art or math in that it is it's pattern recognition so you can yeah get by temporarily by memorizing the different reactions by memorizing the different pathways but a lot of times if you're shown a reaction on a test that you've never seen before you need to be like oh that's this functional group that's this reagent which means it's going to do this to this functional group and also just kind of like the list of priorities in which uh, functional groups are affected which i mean getting up into the the higher the higher echelons of chemistry you and i both know is not always hard and fast but um yeah i think that it's you're out you're taking uh these these people who are so 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 good at memorizing and so used to being able to apply that to the classes that they're in and you're asking them to think in a way that is so unintuitive for them and in a lot of cases i've seen almost mutually exclusive right and like i don't know like the, the same thing that kind of drove me away from biology um at first was just the fact that my brain does not do well with just memorizing a, a bunch of rules and names and exceptions right uh, i was better at kind of recognizing patterns and thinking in uh, I don't know, a little bit more artistically, I guess, yeah. about it. I, um, so I just, I think that it, No, it, I definitely agree. It, I, you were thinking outside the box. Yeah. No, go ahead. Sorry. Right. I was, I, I was going to say, um, like, I remember taking, I think I took biology 10th grade in mm -hmm. high school. And like, it was nothing, nothing against my biology teacher, mm -hmm. like, nothing against her. But like, I just remember like, like, like memorizing parts of the cell and like their function. Like, I was like, God, this is so uninteresting to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> like yeah. I do not care. Um, I guess the mitochondria is the power of the cell. I guess it's the one uh, takeaway. Like, is that, is that, I don't know why that's such a meme, but I guess that's, that's, I, it, it it's is, the one thing it, I take away from biology. I guess something everyone took away from biology. <laughs> right. And also, I'll never forget dissecting a frog. And I was like, no, like, <laughs> I will oh, not make I, a good medical doctor. I was going to say, I, I had the exact opposite experience. I, I think maybe I was just a psychopath as a kid, but I was like, oh, this is sick. <laughs> we did like, uh, a class in high school, and we got to dissect like a lot of stuff. And I was just, I, I was like, well, I mean, it's already dead. It's not feeling any pain. So like, right. let's let's see what's inside. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, actually, I want to I wanna bounce this question off you. In high school, was AP Chem the hardest course you took? Like... Um, no. Okay. Well, no, it was not. Um, what was the hardest course you took in high school? Because AP Chem was hard. Calc BC? Calc okay. It was the hardest course I took in high school. Um, it was, mm. it was calculus. That is hard. Calc 1 and 2 taught at like a college pace um, in a 45 minute class. And it mm. was so labor intensive and it was, it moved so fast that, I mean, it was, it was cool because um, I got, I became really close with my with people in that class. We formed a study right. group. So we would like, rotate people's houses and it was we would have like what we would call calc parties before a yeah, test. that call. sounds lit it was yeah yeah we would come over it was the day, night before a test we'd all come over we'd take turns ordering pizza hosting at our houses and like it, it it was really fun and honestly like the first taste i had of like working at a college pace and it was hard and it was a little miserable at times but um i think that i i still look back on that as like a net positive experience right i i for i remember taking uh i took ap calc i don't really remember the breakdown of what like i, I don't remember what ap calc i guess it was calc one and two i don't even really remember the, the details of it. it it was it was weird like, with the ap designations but regardless yeah. but i i'm a published author because the end of the year project the end of the year project was you had to like implement a calc rule in an elementary school book and so i have an elementary school book I don't even. I have to go to my elementary school oh my and God. find that book. It's in the library somewhere, and I got to go find it. And I don't even remember what I wrote it on, honestly. But it was like, it was like explaining calculus to an elementary school kid. That's, um, that's, a, that's a cool idea. I feel like you can, explain, you can explain these like higher, higher order concepts to uh, to somebody who doesn't have the same understanding you do. That means you actually really understand. Right. So shout out to Miss Craig for doing that. That's such a fun. That's such a fun project. 
Um, congratulations on your publication. Yes, I'm a published author. <laughs> right. Why um, first selling, first selling. Um, Comma A. New York Times, New York, New York Times bestseller. Um, so <laughs> right. Um, it was, uh, there's one other thing I wanted to ask. Uh, shoot. What was it? Oh my God. Um, oh, AP- all right. So calculus in general, right? Yeah. Like it's such a funny subject because I took, I, I took AP Calc in high school, but then in college, cause I, I was in the engineering, I had to take, you know, more calculus. Right. Okay. There was like no better feeling than like understanding calculus, right? It's, it's extremely gratifying to understand calculus. Yes. But it is pretty crazy how quickly that information leaves as soon as you don't take calculus. Like there was like no better feeling. Like, you'd be able to put the whiteboard, the chalkboard, figuring out these these theorems and these yes. limits, right? These integrals oh and derivatives, right? All of it, the proofs. And now if I look at calculus, I don't even understand what's going on, right? I, like it's so – it's such a – weird subject in that sense it's it's like a language so so here's i'm gonna wax a little philosoph- philosophical <laughs> here. i'm not an english person you can, you can tell that too um i can i this is my earlier jokes about not being able to do math or actually uh kind of more reference to an inability to do arithmetic i did study math in undergrad too um just for fun <laughs> um i really really enjoy math and I honestly would go to say that um, the thinking that governs organic chemistry and the thinking that governs stuff like calculus or differential equations is really, really similar. Yeah. Um, in that, like, it, it is pattern recognition. It is, it is like learning a language. And like learning a language, you, it's use it or lose it. So you and I have obviously both gone into chemistry. And I feel like the organic chemical principles that we use a lot and we know very well uh, probably would have fallen out of our head just as fast as the calculus if we had gone into math. Right, right. Um, that's, a, but, that's a really good point, actually. I never really thought about that. That is good. You really, that, that is a philosopher right there. Philosopher. Thank you so mm. much. I, I'm a thinker <laughs> in my time. <laughs> but so, yeah. So after high school, you went to University of Louisville, as we discussed. Um, but then coming to like graduate school then, so UVA, like how did that kind of conversation go then? Like, was it kind of a, a natural decision, an easy decision or what was, you know, how did, yeah, how did it work um, out for you? So very, very easy decision. So my second semester of, of undergrad, I, uh, I took chemistry class with uh, my future PI, Dr. Craig Grapperhouse. He's a wonderful inorganic chemist. He's been an amazing, amazing, super just phenomenal mentor in my life. Um, he kind of, he reached out to me actually um, in the middle of, like, after class once, and he was like, hey, like, you're you're good at this stuff. Do you want to do research? And I was like, Yeah, I want to do research. I have no idea how to start doing research. And uh, I was like, Oh well, like I'm looking for undergrads <laughs> in my lab. And I was just like, Sold. Let's go. Yeah. I don't even nice. know what research he was doing. And he was like, Okay, like what are you interested in? And I'm just like, I like making stuff. I want to work with my hands. I want to mix chemicals together and get other chemicals out. And he's like, All right, we're synthetic and organic chemists, so that's great. We're you're in the lab. So I actually worked for three and a half years um, in my undergrad lab, and oh my god, I absolutely loved it. It was that's crazy. Three and a half um, years, such a good experience. My my grad mentor was one of my best friends. I was in his wedding. Um, Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's funny. I was on the uh, I was the only woman on his side, and I was still the tallest person there. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, how tall are you then? Um, five eleven. Five eleven. Yeah, that's really tall. But that's so pretty funny though taller than the average man but like i he yeah. just, just didn't have a lot of tall friends but yeah this is a poor guy <laughs> but, yeah, he's, um but he's wonderful he is like an older brother to me um and yeah he's still in touch uh he's actually him and his wife just had their first baby so i'm basically wow <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, but yeah so it was just a wonderful wonderful experience and i i fell so so in love with research i worked every summer that i was in undergrad just worked full-time in the lab um and yep. basically just kind of got to LARP as a grad student where it's like, oh man, I love not having classes. I just get to work full days in the lab. And I I knew I wanted to do grad school as soon as I, I got into that lab because I'm just like, okay, if this is what grad school is like, then this is so for me. Right. So, um, Wait, so were your mentors graduate students then at University of Louisville? The, the PhD program? Okay, gotcha. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah, so um, Caleb works at uh, Argonne National Lab now. Um, mm. But I've made a lot of really, like, I made a lot of Shout really, out. 
Oh, National Lab, ama- amazing. He's he's really thriving out there. So, um, really, really proud of him. And That's yeah, really cool. he was such a him and the rest of the grad students in that lab and Dr. Grapperhouse and our collaborator Dr. Buchanan, who um, was kind of a co advisor for a lot of us. Um, right amazing amazing people and excellent mentors and i got so much great experience with that a lot of undergrads don't of just working in the lab reading the literature um going to group meetings presenting on papers and critiquing research it was just a really really good immersive experience so i knew i wanted to right. get it out of undergrad so um i think the main <laughs> the the main question wasn't oh am i going to grad school it's just where am i going to grad school right before um, we get before we get there though a couple of things here because I think I think those are extremely important points in your life, but also in general. Like having that undergraduate research experience is honestly like it's it's honestly not even necessarily about the chemistry itself. Like it's it's about like that really doesn't matter, honestly. It's like about building that relationship with your advisor and like just getting in the lab and seeing what it what it actually chemists actually do because yeah, listen, organic undergraduate labs are fantastic but like there's just like there's a different level to it you know oh absolutely um, i i learned so much in the in my research lab and i i started my um i started second half of uh, freshman year so by the time i got to by the time i got to my like undergrad organic labs my sophomore year i'm just like i already know how to do all this so i'd be in and out in an hour it's great <laughs> yeah that's so cool and i i never forget um because i i, I had a very similar experience where um my my then to be undergraduate advisor, uh, Professor Lloyd Baston, like he was teaching the organic classes, um, but he had just kind of mentioned in passing that he's looking to take on undergraduate students, like in front of the cl- like to the whole class. Yeah. And I was kind of like you, like I was like, well, I've taken like labs, but I don't, I didn't really know what it took to be like, you know, uh, doing lab work like that. And so I was like, all right, screw it. I guess let's just go, let's just go talk to him and, and do it. Best decision of my life because. Uh, like those summers working in the chemistry lab, it was like, it was just so fun. Like I would live on campus and like, I would take some cl- summer courses and, and because it is summer courses, the professors are already like more, way more chill. Like it's not even like, like, and I went to, and I, listen, I went to an undergrad which was very kind of, I think it was like 5,000 undergrads in total. So it was already small classes sizes on top of like on That's summer like, courses. Oh my gosh. It's, yeah, it's, it's even so smaller. Cool. So it's so yeah. chill. Like this, it's so chill. And yeah, learning, 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 taking organic one in the summer of, I think it was summer 2018, man, like just best summer. Cause I was like doing research and like, it was just so cool. Oh my so. gosh. No, that's, that's absolutely fantastic. It's seriously like my, I think my, all of my favorite memories from undergrad probably took place over the summer, just hanging out with my lab mates. Um, we actually right. had a really great group in our hallway of like, it was not just our lab mates, but just our friends from just our general region of the building. Um, I don't know if you know um, Justin Smith, but he's a postdoc at, I forget, one, one of the labs at the University of Houston, but he was in our little group. Okay. Uh, and he was- Unfortunately, another, I don't, but- uh, I mean, yeah, also a very generic white guy name, but- um, <laughs> yeah. Right, Justin. Yeah, but um, <laughs> shout out, Justin, you're great. But um, uh, uh, had a, it was an awesome community. I, I think that it was so cool that I got to do the science. I got to go to like, the yeah, of course, the chiller classes. I think that there was one where- I, I I think it was physics too that I had, was at a horse show like the entire weekend of like the final window and I was like, hey, can I take this after? And they were like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, and right. I, but, that's a hard subject too. Physics too. Physics too was tough. I'm not gonna lie. Physics electric, too was electric, like 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 electric, electric yeah. and magnets. Just straight through every single day. I remember none of it. That's <laughs> that's a tough subject. I'm not gonna lie. Not good. I mean, I don't remember anything about it either, but I, I remember, know. I remember being really sleepy and getting Starbucks on my way in. So, <laughs> right. Shout out. Um, yeah. It's, so anyway, it, I guess the point here is like, if even like, just if you're even like moderately interested in research or just want to learn more about it, just go do it. Cause honestly, like worst comes to worst is that like, you don't like it and you say, eh, you know, unless you've done it, you know, and like you, you figure out what you don't like. So exactly. And I also, I'm like, I, I've, I, I mean, I, I had a lot of other undergrads in the lab at the same time. We had one of the bigger groups in the department. So um, at any given time, we had several undergrads. And even throughout grad school, I've, I've mentored a lot of undergrads, too, of various levels of seriousness. So right. I think that even if you're in a program where 
it's like you you have to do undergrad research for a requirement for a graduation and like you don't really care that much you know what you want to do and it's not that it's st I, I still cannot recommend enough going in especially if you have a uh, advisor and a grad mentor that know that and you can get some right. really great hands-on experience without having to worry about it being too i don't know in depth i uh right right last exactly semester had, last semester i had two undergrads one is one was pre-med and she was just looking for a research credit and the other was very very intense very wanted to uh wanted to go into some kind of research she's not really sure where she's going yet but it was great to work with both of them because like i i could kind of tailor their experiences to what their goals were and it made it a lot easier for me right so what I'm saying here is that if to any undergrads out there listening, I cannot recommend research enough. I think it is so fun. I'm super, super biased. Um, and it definitely depends on the group you got, but, um, that's also true. No matter, no matter what, I think that there is going to be something that's a great fit for you out there, no matter what. You right. Want. There's something for everyone, right? There really something is. for everyone. Um, but so then now, you know, you're going to graduate school. Now you got to decide where you want to go though. So how did, how did this kind of all transpire then? Because, um, yeah, university. I've actually never really been through Virginia, so I don't really. It's really quite unfortunate, actually. It's a beautiful state, but oh, it's, um, it's lovely here. Yeah, hot summers, um, but um, it's currently yeah. eighty six degrees outside and it's noon. But <laughs> which, by the way, I just realized it's Memorial Day weekend. Um, I just I didn't oh. realize that. Right? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah. I, oh, that's when the pool opened. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, pool's finally open. Yay. Uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, um, the, I, I knew I wanted to go to grad school. I was looking at a lot of different places, a lot of really cool, interesting programs. I knew that, um, so I was, I kind of had a weird niche in my lab. I ended up being a kind of an organic chemist in an in-org lab because I was, I was the ligand lady. I made the ligands. I, ligand lady. <laughs> I, made, uh, I, I love it. Come, come to me with your with your wildest ligand dreams, and I'll make it for you. <laughs> so I got a lot of really cool experience uh, working with um, very very heterocycle uh, and heteroatom heavy um, just frameworks, just on on virtue of them needing to coordinate to something. So I kind of got a lot of really great early on practice with chemistry that was uh, sticky <laughs> mm -hmm. and. Uh, but I really wanted to kind of go further into organic chemistry. It was always my favorite class. Um, conceptually, I was like, I want to like really, really dive deeper into this. Um, so I was looking at organic labs just straight from the beginning. Um, and mm -hmm. what happened with UVA is that um, I it was just kind of on my list of places that I was interested in with programs and professors doing work that I was interested in. And uh, my really close friend at the time um, was interviewing here for med school. Mm -hmm. And um, I he mentioned offhand that he had like this interview at UVA, and I was like, oh, that's that's crazy. That's like one of my top choices for grad school. And he goes, well, just come to the interview with me. And so we, so he and I took this little mini vacation, middle of the week. Let's go. Uh, I got so fun with him. Um, yeah, it it. Um, so he had his med school interview here, and I just went around and made meetings with professors whose work interested me, and. Mm -hmm. um, in the end, so I met with um, Dean Harmon, Brent Gano, and my my future at the time advisor, Mike Kalinsky. And I mean, all of these all of these professors were wonderful, and they they had to do excellent research. And I, I was so so flattered that they that they made time for me as a random undergrad, being like, "Hi, I'm applying to grad school in two years." Um, yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to kind of figure out what my direction is here. And um, That's I don't know. So I mean, nice. I, I seriously would not be anywhere near where I am without the uh, the support and the charity of so many awesome mentors in my life. Right. Um, I met uh, I, I met with all of them, and I, there was I, something about just the dynamic that I had with Mike. Um, we it, it started out, of course, very kind of polite, whatever, and then I think we just start talking about science, and the conversation just it, something about it changes, like we start going on tangents like oh hey this reminds me of this reaction oh this reminds me of whatever i read this paper recently that was like this and we ended up just kind of geeking out about um his specific fields of research and like stuff that i was interested in and i was like oh yeah i had this idea and i the it was like probably the fastest hour of my life 
Um, wow. But he ended up just talking the entire thing away. He gave this very kind of brief presentation about the research project he had going on, but then we just kind of geeked out for the rest of it. And yeah. I walked away from that being like, okay, this guy loves chemistry as much as I do. I want to work for him. And mm, so that's that, so cool. That, and, and so when I got in, I was just like, yep, let's go. That's, I know where yeah. I'm going. I, that's so, so sweet. I'm really, really lucky that it worked out so, so nicely and that the, uh, the choice was so easy for me. Um, right. Uh, let's, uh, I'll spend a little bit of time on this because I, I feel like a lot of, I feel like a lot of undergrads might, or, or think about going to graduate school. It can be a little intimidating, right? And to reach oh out to God, professors, yeah. right? It can be, it can be very intimidating. Now, you know, look, if you're thinking about going to graduate school, you're already like kind of like in a, you know, you're already kind of a go-getter in that sense. So Absolutely. you don't have to like really kind of worry about that. What I would say though, is that like, you don't have to necessarily know the chemistry, right? Just showing the initiative and showing and doing a little bit of due diligence about like respecting the person that you're meeting, their research, knowing a little bit about it, but like, you don't have to understand it. Just like know, like, Broadly. Just knowing the words, right? Knowing exactly. the words. So, like, honestly, if you don't know, that's totally fine. And I, I feel like it allows you to kind of come in and be like, "Hey, this reaction that you that you are working on, it's really, really interesting to me. I don't know what's going on particularly. Will you right. explain? Me? Because yeah. let me tell you, if anything, if professors love to talk about anything, it is their research. They love to explain. Yes. So to every niche, here. minute detail that that like. That is not any every detail that's like not even relevant to what you just asked. Like they will go into that detail and they love it. Exactly, um, exactly. So yeah, you're talking to people who this is their entire this is their entire livelihood. This is their entire life. So of course they love to talk about it. And right. honestly, like giving them the opportunity to do that is obvious is going to already reflect well on you because that's something that they all enjoy doing. That's what I say to people. I'm like honestly, like when I talk like when i talk to professors it's honestly so easy because all you got to do is ask them about the research and it's like it, it's an open book right so it's like it's, it's you know <laughs> it's like i know you really got to do much you know it's like um in all seriousness though like yeah like people generally love talking about the research right it's super fun when you're an expert right it's super fun to do it um and we love talking about it so oh my gosh yeah. like don't like when you're applying like it's really don't overcomplicate it like just yeah. Go in there and ask about their research and like, and just see what the, see what the vibes are. Right. I feel like generally people vibes like generally people know, like you, you, I feel like for the most part, you can kind of trust your, your, your heart. Like if it feels right, it's probably right. Honestly. Um, cause also too, there's no like one answer to graduate school, like, and one advisor, like trust, like oh my gosh, there's not yeah, one, there's not one perfect school, not one perfect advisor. Um, Going with a little bit open minded, like trust me, like there's there's plenty out there for you. Oh my gosh, um, I don't yeah, know. That's, and no, that's another huge thing. And also, like during my the meeting I had with uh, with Mike, he brought me in to meet um, brought me in to meet the lab mates because this was like the middle of the day on a weekday, so everybody was there. And mm -hmm. um, it was that was also a really big selling point to me because they were all just like, "Oh my gosh, hi, I'm so and so, I'm so and so," and they were showing me around and they were asking me just about like what I was interested in and what projects I was interested in and like. I don't know. And, and even after like that tiny interaction and I started in the lab that summer, um, like I feel like it would be really easy for the senior grad students or taking like the, you know, the very chipper, cheery first year and being like, oh, another one. But no, right. like, they all they all invited me to lunch with them. They all would sit and talk with me like at the end of the day, they'd be hanging out in a group just kind of sitting around chilling and they'd be like, Anna, come on over, come and hang out with us. And yes, that's they, it. They made me feel so incredibly welcome in their friend group that already existed. So I think that that was also just such an excellent sign for me. Right. And that like, this, this group is so nice and fun and inclusive and made me feel at home from the moment I stepped in the lab. That's so awesome. You know, that's what you got to look out for, you know, like, Absolutely. like, honestly, honestly, like, and sometimes I swear to God, like, it's not even the chemistry itself that makes grad school. It's the people that you're with and your advisor. Like it really, like at the end of the day, this is my opinion, take it with a grain of salt, but like the research itself is not necessarily like, doesn't really matter. <laughs> like I think it doesn't really matter. It's like the people, that, cause you're here for five years, you're here exactly. for five, six years. So like, like you got to be with people that you want to see every day. And like, if the vibes are up, then the chem, like it, it's the vibes are up, you know, I, what more do I need to say? 
So right, and like yeah, that. no, I. I strongly strongly agree and i'm so i'm so glad someone else is saying it because that's a piece of advice i give to younger grad students a lot is that if you are split between a group that you get along with that you vibe with really well a pi that you get along with super well but isn't the research isn't quite what you want to do versus a lab that you have worse vibes from but has more right. relevant research always go for the one that has the better people because yeah. i also think that if you're in a lab you have so much agency to be able to go off on things that interest you like that's that's what's so cool about grad school is that you have the ability to take things in new directions so right. if there is not something that you're super super interested in there then you have the opportunity to to make one right which i yeah. think is also really really important but i mean the vi vibes vibes above all um yeah the, uh, i'm in like the fourth they were all fourth years. There's a big cohort of fourth years when I came in, and I'm still friends with all of them. Like, yeah, I even, that's awesome. I, I, I talked to I talked to most of not most of them, but like I talked to two of them actually very regularly. Mm -hmm. Still, so now, I'm, sorry. So, no, so yeah, I was just saying, like throughout your graduate school experience, or even like even an undergrad. So, like maybe what are some things that like kind of made you a more efficient chemist? Like what like what are some like little things that kind of like that you do that you that you would recommend for for other people. Oh, okay. So I think that um, I I feel like my uh, my productivity in the lab doubled, maybe tripled when I uh, became friends slash co-authors with um, our postdoc when I was like a second and third year, because mm -hmm. he was so efficient. He and like he would be doing something like we worked in hoods next to each other a lot, and right. um, I would see him doing something a certain way, and I would be doing it a different way, and he'd be like, "Oh, why aren't you doing it this way? You should be doing it. like." I think th this is the way that I do it. And I found that to be a lot helpful, a lot more helpful. And he, and he would sometimes offer that, but a lot of times I'd see him doing like doing something. I'm like, what are you doing? And he would, he would explain to me and I'm like, that is so much of a better way to do it. So I think that throughout, right. um, throughout that was definitely like a, a greater example of that, but just looking to senior lab members and how they do things, what their systems are kind of, and, and then kind of just, steal them from them and then yes mess them up until they're yours <laughs> right i think that right. if you're you're going you're going to people in the lab who have been there for a while who have a workflow who have shortcuts who have habits that um they have adopted to make them more efficient and faster and better and more rigorous researchers and i mean it works for them for a reason so i think that if you try to adopt right. those then that is just kind of, yeah look to look to mentors look to more senior people yeah. and also also just I, I think that this is a huge thing and this is one of the pieces of advice that one of the senior students gave to me when i first joined um is that just spend time in the lab and yeah. like that it like hours and like i i don't want to get to like unhealthy work-life balance sigma chemist grind set here but like <laughs> you're gonna be <laughs> You're going to be a lot less, uh, a lot less productive earlier on, uh, just by yes. virtue of being less experienced. And I think at the very beginning, it's really important that you are putting in a lot of time on the ground at the bench in the lab, uh, because mm -hmm. the only way that you're going to streamline these things and gain practice and proficiency with a lot of these operations is just by doing them. Right. I completely agree. Um, yeah, and you, I, I actually. I completely agree with what you said. Like there's, it's, it's hard to like, there's not like one thing, like if you ask me, what are things I do to be more efficient? Like there's not really any one thing I could really think of, but like, but I, everything that I've learned comes from like, you know, my the postdocs I work with and like the, and the, you know, the, I guess the senior members of the lab yeah. and everything that they do now I just adopt. And it's funny now. Cause now I'm, You're it on now I'm right. I'm going to be a fourth year. And now it's like, Oh wow. That now I'm here. Um, and it just, it's one of those things that just kind of works like that. Like, um, oh, absolutely. and also even just, even just like, if you're ever unsure about something, like, like I never have a problem going to my advisor, Brad, and just being like, Hey, like, how did you do this as a graduate student? Cause like a lot of the things I do, like he did, or like asking the postdocs, like, how would you, how do you think about this? Like what, like, what can I be doing better here? Um, that is, I, I think, one of the most common pieces of advice I give. And one day I'll learn to take it. Um, <laughs> I, 
my um so one of my closest friends in the in the lab currently he's a rising fifth year and i think that this is something that he is so good at and something that i really admire in him is that if he is struggling on a concept or an idea or even just some kind of bench operation he will come to all of us he'll like make a lap around the lab and be like how would you do it how would you do it how would you do it and i think that the humility and also just the I don't know, awareness that he is surrounded by people that do have experience and have necessarily different experiences that he than he does that could be willing to willing to or able to offer advice or um, help or a new perspective. And I think that that is such a admirable and effective and I think underutilized um, right. attribute in, in a lot of researchers, because I think that you kind of have to have a bit of an ego in this uh, in this business, and you do a little bit, yeah. And I, I think that, and this is fully me calling myself out when when I say this, but like, I think that things would go a lot smoother and be a lot easier for everyone if people uh, were, I don't know, more more willing or more frequently asked for help. Right. It's yeah. It's well. It's uh, this is actually a good. This is actually a good talking point because it is just it just it shows up again and again where like people don't ask for help because you think you're in a mindset where like, like you're in graduate school and you think you have to know the answers to these things. And then you like, and of course, like, listen, your advisor could be the nice, the kindest person in the world, but there, there's always going to be this, Oh, this person knows a lot more than me. Like, it's just like, and I don't know how to, it's, it's hard. It's hard. And Advisors can do their best to try and break that barrier, but honestly, I just don't know how to ever really go away. I, I just think it'll always be there, yeah. um, unfortunately. Um, perhaps over time. Perhaps over time. Um, but I think that also, like, it, yeah, if you're, if you're a first year grad student coming in and your advisor is this like middle aged person with tenure that like has authored all these papers and been leading this group, it's like you don't want to go up to them and like even if they are the nicest person in the world and will never get on you for asking a stupid question you just want them to think you're smart and right. confident and already know how to right. do everything and it's really hard to kind of go to them and admit oh hey i don't know how to do everything and, and that can be hard with yeah. uh with more senior grad students or postdocs too because like yeah i know that um one of my one of my closest friends currently um and one of the fourth years when i first joined um Oh my gosh, I was terrified of her. She was so good at her job and she was like really funny and like kind of quiet. And I was like, I want to be your friend so bad. <laughs> and right. So, and like, I didn't start going to her for help until a lot later on in, uh, in my first year, probably my second semester, because I was like, well, I want her to think I'm smart. Right. <laughs> right. Think I'm confident. Right. And yeah. We, and like, you, you just think you have to know the answer. And like, I just. <sighs> And that's and that's the thing we always it's like we put that on ourselves too. It's like it, there's no like there's no like outside influences. Like you just ourselves like feel. And I don't know why position of this. I don't know why everyone has it. I don't know where it comes from. But like it's like I I get into grad school and I'm like everyone needs to think that I know everything right now. Yeah. Right. Like. And it's like why uh, why are you there <laughs> if not to learn? Right. At 21 or 22 years old, I'm supposed to have all the synthetic and knowledge experience of a you know of a tenured professor that's been doing this for 50 years like it's just like why like and i think i don't know why i don't know why just i think when you come in with a lot of research experience as an undergrad people are almost kind of expecting like oh well right you worked a lot for three and a half years you already know what to do and i was like yeah i totally already know what to do yeah and, <laughs> and, and then people will be like oh yeah you know this very specific type of purification i was like obviously i was like crushing go google it <laughs> Right. It's, I don't know why we do this to ourselves. I don't know why. Um, yeah. Let us know, let us know in the comments, like how you kind of deal with this stuff, because I, I don't really, I hope it goes away, but honestly, I think conversations like this might help, help this along. Like, absolutely. And hum- like also, humility is such a huge thing. Like, and also like what I think that, for, I mean, just for me going into a postdoc, hopefully going into academia, um, just, I would like to know if there's anything that those people that in more senior positions could do to make that help more accessible, to make themselves more approachable, or if that is even a possible thing to, to want it is if that's right. something that can entirely that can fall on them at all. Mm-hmm. I oftentimes like, cause I, I really appreciate my advisor because when he's here on campus, his doors like kind of open pretty, yeah. virtually all the time. And when he has, when he has to do some writing, like he'll kind of close the door and like, you know, that's a, his, that's his time, right? You got to oh, yeah. respect that. 
But like when his doors open, like I'm more than happy to kind of go in there and ask a question about like, you know, that, he, you know, reactions he's done in the past and like, how, how would you do this? Cause like, uh, like I just, but that's also my kind of personality. Right. And I just, there's no, I wish I could give this, the, give that to other people. Like, I was going to say, can you run me some of that? The, I, I was going to say, like, I don't know, know like, <laughs> like, that's like your, your job as an advisor is to answer these kind of questions. Like, and so like, that's that's my mindset that's my opinion so oh yeah absolutely i, I don't know hopefully I know, and, and mike is and mike my boss is also excellent about this uh it comes up in group meeting a lot um during our research presentations um i think that like the newer cohort of grad students at least in my lab are so much better at this than i was um or right. me or people in my cohort were where they're just like yeah um so i got this result i don't really know why and they can just right. go up there and say it and then um, every single time Mike and their colleagues and the more senior students and any postdocs we have are all like, oh, well, it could be this, it could be this. And it, it, we launch into a very constructive conversation. And usually, like, I mean, as a as someone who has already defended, like, I'm still hanging out. I'm still going to group meeting just because I'm here. And, like, I'm still learning stuff. And right. It's, it's so like, good. You're asking these questions that are, like, 100% of the time, it will be for the good of the whole. Right. Right. I hear that. Um, so what, ha one other thing I wanted to ask you is, so, you know, graduate school can be a sludge at times. It can be. Um, but you know, are there things that you do like, you know, mentally, physically to kind of help you, you know, get through those tough times and like, what, you know, how do you, how do you, like, what do you, what do you say to, you know, younger graduate students that are kind of going through it? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think that, I mean, uh, the, having a hobby is such a big deal. Um, I think right. that. I, that's kind of a, it's, it's a hard part of grad school because so many of us are in this because we love it and we are super, super enthusiastic about this. But sometimes when you get kind of, yeah, in the trenches, if your project isn't working, if you're dealing with stuff, just it, in personal life, stuff, right? Exactly. Like, even exactly. personal issues, right? I think it's so hard that like, yeah, I, um, I have continued horse riding. Um, that has been a huge, huge thing for me that has really, that's really awesome. been, been my tethered to sanity throughout the past few years um i really like art and music uh so mm -hmm. but also like I, I know that um a lot of people uh including myself have gotten into like working out getting into fitness like my roommate started lifting i started running um and i this is so i i guess uh stereotypical just like oh yes just go outside and go for a walk and you won't be depressed anymore like <laughs> that, it's not that but also like it helps right I think like, physical activity is, especially especially if you are in, like, I'm lucky enough to be in a branch of chemistry that is very active, that I am on my feet most of the day. I will be walking mm. back and forth. I'll get my steps in uh, just yep. working in the lab. But I know uh, my roommate, for instance, is a, uh, she's a computational physical chemist. And mm -hmm. so she, a lot of times will just be like, oh, hey, do you want to go on a walk? Do you want to go get lunch or something? Because she just has to sit there and let her code run. And right. I feel like you can get stir crazy really easily for that. But yeah, I also think that um, just in a like an in grad school manner and like not like uh, relegated to hobbies outside of grad school, I think that just looking to your your friends and your colleagues for support in those times mm -hmm. uh, is is really important. And just kind of right. because everybody who has been through grad school or is currently going through grad school has been there everyone right it, it is a universal experience right. so um hold on i actually can i my my roommate just got home and I yeah good close the door just so i'm not bothering her yeah yeah go no problem all good mm -mm. okay okay we're good we're back is there a cat in your bed though is that a cat right there oh yes it is a cat would you like to see the cat yes let's see it oh let's my go gosh. all right all right uh, hold on. I've got to be. I've got to be careful about this, and also like not show how incredibly, like casually I'm dressed. But I know. Let's I go. Know. I know. Yo, I hear the meows. Yep. This is Marcy. <laughs> She's a star. Marcy, yo, it's adorable. I hear his eyes. She's like, you interrupted my nap time. You've been talking <laughs> my time to sleep. That's adorable. Say hi to the people, Marcy. Yo, 
Say hi to Marcy in the comments. Let's go. That's awesome. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're so dramatic. <laughs> No, but honestly, those, those points you brought up are, are, are super important. I always say, like, honestly, like, your physical and mental health that really are, at the end of the day, the most important thing. So, like, there's no it's chemistry fine. that, yeah, like, yeah, they are. Mental health is health, right? I mean, yeah. um, and at the end of the day, like, the chemistry, again, my opinion, take it with a grain of salt, but chemistry doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Like, you know, if you're going through it, personal issues like you gotta hand you gotta you can't do good chemistry if like you're not in a good place mentally and physically i think you know it's just oh, the exactly. bottom line oh, in I, my opinion oh i know i totally i think that that kind of goes for literally any field ever that like right this requires i mean it, um, basically any profession is going to have stuff where it requires a ton of energy a ton of effort a ton of just mental mental input and if you don't have a baseline of like being able to give that then it doesn't matter how hard you work through it. You're not going to get over it. Right. And you're honestly just yep. going to exhaust yourself more in the process. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we can, you know, we can speak, you know, I know people that kind of neglect their, neglect their mental health. And a lot of times neglect their physical health, like just to, like, to do the chemistry. I'm like, I'm telling you, like, it's, I, it's not going to matter. Like, you know, um, that's, and that's you know. one thing that if I could tell first year Anna that, um, I, I wish I could cut, that's like, I wish I could go back and be like, hey, it's important that you remember to eat and that you mm. go home at a normal time. And like, right. I remember like my first semester, I was so excited to be there and also just so desperate to prove myself that mm -hmm. I was spending these like crazy, ridiculous Sigma chemist grind set hours. And uh, and I think that like the culture of, of academia is definitely definitely still like we've gotten to a much better place, but definitely still praises that to some degree. And so I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm such a good right. chemist. I'm doing all of these things. I'm making all of these sacrifices for my work. When in reality, it's just like, I am really, really neglecting, yeah, my physical health, my mental health. And like, that's going to come at a huge cost. And that did not set me, right. That I started in 2019. So that did not set me up very well going into COVID. <laughs> um, I was going to yeah, say, I man, was, uh, what a year. Yeah, I still can't so believe that I, happened, honestly. It was such a... What a, I, what a I blur. Can't that was four years ago. Like I, I can't believe that happened in oh. the past. Like I, I feel like I've aged about ten years since that happened. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I, like yeah, I in grad school. Like I've been here for three years, but honestly, it feels like I've aged thirty. Like I don't like it feels like I've aged thirty years. You're gonna age uh, like just the wisdom again, uh, which I look forward to. I look forward to. Um, so I've realized I, I, I how many more gray hairs than I came in with. <laughs> Oh uh, man, but yeah, I yeah, I think with that though, Anna, it was such a pleasure talking with you today. Oh my God, uh, she's such a great, such a great person. Thank um, you. follow to follow Dr. Anna Davis on Twitter. Um, it's such a great. Honestly, when you said the Luby Barfield reaction, I was like, put a huge smile on my face. I was like, yo, that, like, I was like, I was like, it was so like, um, it was so like. Oh, I saw. I was like, yeah, I was like Aiden and Noah so cool. reacting, and I was like, wait a minute, the the gears in my in my like Twitter post brain were running. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, and that was an awesome conversation between I, the uh, two of you. I really, I really love how you got got to revisit your own your own proposed strategies and kind of compare and contrast. I think that was a really cool idea to do a follow up video. It was like so out of the blue because, like, again, the haters say it was planned, but I swear, like. We we put out that video the same basically the same day they they submitted that paper to Jax. I oh the way it worked out like I I couldn't like it was just crazy. Um, yeah, I'm in a I'm in a group chat with um with three other uh, Twitter people. Um, uh, it's Noah, Nick Chiapini, and Casey Ortiz. And um, I remember yeah. Noah putting the uh, putting like the, we'll, we'll share papers that we read and think are cool. But she he put the that total synth paper in there and i was just like oh my gosh like did is that like something that you missed or is that something that was like inspired by this and he was like no 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 this is yeah. later <laughs> that's bonkers. absolutely unbelievable yeah and like so yeah and like, it's just it's funny now because their synthesis was so good i was like oh wow like Brilliant. it was so good um 
And it's just crazy to think because I tell us like I'm not really a total sentence person. I kind of do organic metallic transition metal cross coupling reactions. So like yeah. like I'm always thinking about cross coupling. Like like that's kind of where my mind goes. So like seeing total synthesis in three dimensions and seeing this work, like it's so cool to me that Oh my gosh. Um, I I can read total synth papers all day. When I when I'm up for a literature and group meeting, I will always do yeah. total synth paper because <laughs> And, and everyone everyone's probably tired of my shtick at this point in the lab but like it i think makes you so much of a better chemist reading those papers because you are getting exposure to so many reactions and mm -hmm. so many just ingenious uses of those reactions and sometimes not for their intended purposes which is right. i think just such a, a cool and exciting way to just show off the utility of chemistry and right that's why we're doing it and like it's like it's not even like the it's not even like the it's not even the biological purposes of these molecules right it's like who it's it's always about methodology like how can we progress the field right um I, there's I no chemist that, actually i feel like no chemist really actually cares about the medicinal properties you know what i mean like right. I that's mean, my yeah, opinion you, again but you need to say that it that it has anti-carcinogenic properties to get funding but it's like right. yeah we, we made uh 8.2 milligrams of this um <laughs> over these seven steps but also it's like Look at all cool stuff we do. Synth to me kind of feels like performance art. <laughs> yeah. Where it's like it really I'm, is. I'm doing this to show you that I can and to show right. you something, like show you kind of the, the process of getting there and the engineering and the beauty of it. Uh rather right. than necessarily the utility. <laughs> right. And we say this endearingly, by the way. Like oh, if no, it's twenty seven steps, like I say this endearingly. Like if it's twenty seven steps and you made five milligrams, but look at all the cool things you did, like oh I'm gosh, happy for and, you. Like that's so cool. And and more than and more than just the molecule that you made is going to come of that the utility and the transformations that you are using these methods in such innovative ways are also going to come from that and people are going to look mm -hmm. at this these total synthetic papers as a whole and be like oh wow I didn't know I could do that transformation with this reagent and that's really useful too yeah it's so cool so you know as, yeah as we wrap up here though you know what what can uh, people expect next for Dr Anna Davis what what do you kind of have on the horizon here. Um, so I am, I'm, so I'm currently fielding, uh, two potential postdoc opportunities. Um, Look I forward. am very, very, very much hoping that at least one of those works out. Um, let's go, but, uh, I'm obviously, I'm not going to speak too much to it yet because I don't want to jinx it. Yeah, of course. I don't want gotcha. to count my chickens before yeah. they've hatched, but, um, I will be hopefully starting up, uh, one of those in the fall. And in the meantime, I am just going to be hanging out, hanging out. <laughs> Well earned, well earned. You're gonna vacation at all this summer? Or are you just gonna be working? Uh, actually, no, no. I'm, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna. Um, so at least I'm. At, to my immediate knowledge, I am doing a um, like a road trip down the East Coast at the end of June. Um, yes. I've got a lot of. Got a lot of friends. Where are you going? Um, got a lot of friends. Uh, kind of a little bit off of 95, so I'm just taking like a week and a half mm. and just going north to south, and uh, just stopping and visiting people along the way. So That's gonna be awesome. Back. Yeah. Well, well, Anna, thank you again for coming on. So uh, make sure you go follow, make sure you go follow Anna on Twitter. Her content is honestly like it makes me laugh out loud, even in the in the office. So, um, just absolute delight. Uh, I wish, so I, I wish, I, yeah, I wish the absolute best for you in the future. And uh, it's ex it's exciting times right now. So, it really um, is. It's a little little scary, but yeah. Um, thank um, you so much for having me, Aiden. This was this was an absolute blast. Yeah. Well, everyone, thank you for another episode, but you know, we'll catch you on the next one. All righty. Let's see. I got to pull this. There it is.